introduction. Hi, everybody. Uh, you mentioned a post-lunch session a couple of times, so Prithvi and I have a tough task of actually engaging with all of you in the post-lunch session. Uh, hopefully, we've got some, uh, you know, interesting stuff, which is going to be uh, keeping all of you engaged. So when I was asked to speak on this topic on 5G and, you know, what is, where are consumers on this, uh, the immediate sectors which really sprang up in my mind were things like gaming, how is it going to be altering the gaming landscape. Uh, the second one which really sprang up was, um, uh, was around metaverse, right, because that's a new thing which is really coming up. And I said, how is all that going to be changing with 5G coming up? Uh, and what I did really was that I decided to speak to a passionate gamer in my team, which is Prithvi, okay? Now, and I know Prithvi, Prithvi is a, Prithvi considers himself to be a pro at fol following the telecom sector. He's been doing this for a long time. He's an active gamer and all of that. So when I sp spoke to Prithvi on gaming and, you know, what does he think about 5G and how is it really going to be altering uh, the world of gaming, etc. I was really surprised by a very mixed perspective which he had on this. So here I was thinking that Prithvi is going to be gung-ho about, you know, how the world of gaming is going to be changing and all of that. But he did have a very mixed view, you know, in terms of which are the areas which are really going to be changing with the coming of 5G and which are the areas where there could be certain things which need to be um, addressed. So what we are going to be covering in this session between us is that you know, how much is consumers' awareness about 5G? Which are the areas where they, where they really believe that 5G is going to be changing things for them? What are the kind of challenges which they anticipate? What do they think about their handsets? You know, are their handsets really going to be supporting uh, this new technology which is, going, uh, which is there? And where are marketers uh, on this? Now, before we start this session and before I hand it over to Prithvi, just starting with a couple of data points. So the first one really, and this is not a new one, but nonetheless, it's good to start with some numbers, which is that where are consumers in terms of their usage of mobile devices, right? So if you just look at that, on an average, we are seeing about four hours and 15 minutes, which Indian audiences are spending on their smartphones, okay? Now, this data is only for Android smartphones. This is NCCS ABC. We are media researchers, so we always have to talk in the context of a target group, this is one lakh plus audience, 15 to 45 years. So that's the kind of stuff that we've seen. And what we've also seen is that this time which is spent on smartphones has actually seen a, uh, seen a whopping increase in the last two years, right? So if you just see, there's a 28% increase that we're seeing. We compared this with, with the kind of data, uh, you know, on this metric with a couple of other countries. We've seen that for a couple of other countries, for them to see this kind of jump, it's taken them about four years. In our country, not surprising, this has really happened in two years of time, right? So rapid adoption, fueled by pandemic, a lot more activities happening, a lot of free content available and things like that. And you also have on that chart that, you know, in terms of share of various activities, what are the kind of activities which consumers are doing? Now, just let's see that in terms of our evolution, and, you know, I, I like to do this benchmarking across markets, so I just thought that in terms of share of time, you know, how does share of time which our audiences are spending on smartphone, how does it stack up, you know, with say the most mature market, which is US. See, let's what's, what's, what's really happening there. So there are some differences that you see there. So for example, if you look at social media, the share of time which US audiences spend on social media is far higher than us. Right? But on the other hand, if you look at VOD consumption, our share of time is higher. And the reason for that is that there's also a lot of connected TV consumption which happens there. So it's not that incidental that they want to see less of their smartphone, but the fact is that they have access to connected TV, and that's the reason that we are seeing a difference there. Uh, again, gaming, if you see here, you know, they are far ahead of us. Okay? So this is the kind of landscape that we have. Four hours on a day is being spent, uh, a massive increase in terms of time spent. In terms of share of time, this is how various activities stack up. And if you just go to the next chart, Prithvi, yeah, and here is where I'll hand it over to you to build from here. Thanks, Dolly. Uh, first, I'm passionate about gaming, but I'm not good at it. So I just want to set that, uh, that disclaimer out there. Uh, but as Dolly said, gaming, right, and 5G. So just before we start, uh, just by a show of hands, how many people play games on their mobile phone? Wow. 
Okay, are your bosses aware about this? Just checking. Yeah. Okay. So, of these, how many of you play your more competitive, say, first-person shooters, your more high-end graphics, like like Call of Duty, Free Fire, Battlegrounds Mobile? Anyone in the group? Okay. So far fewer. So I'll tell you. So, so for me, um, now I primarily play these games, and I play them a lot. But I play them on Wi-Fi because quite often on on cellular, on 4G, uh, I have this issue of latency, which is Sorry, we're going to get a little technical, but it's it's about maybe 40 to 60 milliseconds sometimes, especially when you're traveling in traffic. So by the time I see the other guy and I and I aim downside to shoot, the person has moved and is shooting me. Uh, in the game, not in real life. My life is not that exciting otherwise. S tough crowd. So. Uh, <laughs> So, so basically, with 4G, the, ex the experience on these games to me is, is not that great. So what was fascinating is when I looked at the smartphone panel data, and yeah, we have an in-house smartphone panel where we track consumer behavior. So we found that, uh, yeah, so about one in over 30% of the panel plays games every day. And some of the most popular games they play are Free Fire and Battlegrounds Mobile. So again, fairly competitive first-person shooters. So to me, okay, there's clearly demand and maybe with a 5G network that's going to get better. But as, as Dolly said, I did have my apprehensions about what 5G is really going to change and maybe I had a very pessimistic view to, to Dolly's optimistic view. So we said let's, let's split the difference, let's do a consumer survey and a marketer survey and get other people's perspectives, you know, wisdom of the crowd so to speak. So we'll start with the consumer bit. So the first thing we see is uh, in terms of broad awareness, most consumers were aware about, about 5G. About 77% said they were aware about 5G and aware about the launch of 5G. When we probe a little further, 9 out of 10 said that yes, they know it's a new uh, mobile network that's going to come across. Uh, 1 out of 4 actually said it's a new software or a new app, which I just palmed off as, you know, that's just people who are just unaware. But then I thought about it. Actually, that's not wrong. Because, yes, 5G is not a new software, but to access 5G, especially you have a Samsung or an or a Apple device, you need them to push the OTA update so that you can, enable, you can activate 5G. So if you think about it, even the one in four is not necessarily wrong. So I was quite impressed with the knowledge of, of these consumers. And we asked questions about um, what, what, what do you think will increase with 5G? The first and most obvious thing they said is speed. So 88% said that the speed of 5G is going to increase. Um, 78% said that the call quality is going to increase. I'm not sure about that, but again, I don't know enough about that, but that may be true. Uh, a good 70 plus percent said that the price of phones are going to go up. So that's interesting because they're aware that the price are going to go up and later on we'll revisit this point. Um, what's really intriguing to me, it's a small number, bear with me, but one in 10 said that battery life and network coverage will actually get worse. Now. If you think about it, this actually happened in the early days of 4G. With 4G, there weren't enough towers. Your phone will constantly use more battery to latch onto network. You had worse coverage, battery life will get worse. We may see something similar on 5G, so it's, it's nice that some people are already anticipating that on the, on the consumer side. So we asked questions on what activities do you think will be most popular? And intuitively, they said video streaming, browsing, mobile gaming, and... Um, I'm trying to do some memory, even though I've got screens on either side, which is, which is silly. Um, yes, video calls. Yeah. But what's also interesting is phone usage as primary internet, which one can think of as using your phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot. So this is, and a lot of us have done this, right? We're, we're out somewhere, we don't have Wi-Fi access, we have to get onto a, a Zoom call. Uh, we have to tether our phone to our laptop, and you start sharing your screen, sharing video, running audio, things get very laggy. So this is something that, should get much better with 5G. So I see a lot of optimism from consumers on these activities. Uh, now when it comes to purchase of device, what's interesting is nearly half of them, actually a little over half of them said that they, their current phone doesn't support 5G and they're looking to buy a new one. Now again, realistically this number might be eventually far less, but it still shows optimism for buying new phones, awareness that the existing phones might not support the network. And what's also really interesting is that chart on the left, uh, which is on your, your 5G dongles. So a lot of homes, not just here, but even in smaller towns, and specifically in smaller towns, don't have a fiber connection to the home. So if they have internet or wireline internet, it's not that fast. 
but with potentially 5G hotspots, you can get extremely high-speed internet at home. So again, multiple devices can connect to it. So the fact that nine out of 10 said that they're looking forward to that and they're open to purchasing a 5G dongle is remarkable to me. Now, when we ask them about their consumption behavior and their spend patterns, so pretty much everyone said that, yes, we expect our consumption of data to increase on 5G. And that differs. So again, it's evenly split between 31, 31, 31 across the 10 to 50, 50% to maybe 2x. And we found a similar story when it comes to how much they, they expect to pay. What's nice is pretty much everyone feels that, uh, everyone we surveyed feels that, yes, the prices of data is going to go up, but the amounts they're willing to pay may not be exactly proportional, but at least it shows you that a 10 to 50% seems to be most preferable when it comes to a price point. But again, this is a very small, quick and dirty survey. This is just to give you just indicative data. And this is the last bit on the consumer part, which is essentially trying to gauge how much of an impact they felt um, a network upgrade had for them, for going from 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G, and 4G to 5G, which is a guesstimate. So again, 20% said that 2G to 3G was a big impact. About 47%, or nearly half of them said that going from 3G to 4G was a big impact. But a whopping 88% that expect that going from 4G to 5G is going to have a tremendous impact on the behavior. So that's, that's remarkable to me, just showing the level of optimism that consumers have for 5G. Uh, it also means that we as an industry probably need to set realistic benchmarks on what 5G will and won't achieve for them, because it, we don't want to leave people hanging. So now I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk about what marketers feel. So basically, marketers were far more aware about 5G than consumers. So 93% of them, 93 were aware that what 5G was, as well as when the launch happened and more details about it, which makes sense, right? We, we would be more aware than the average consumer. Uh, one in two of them said that 5G will significantly impact advertising spends, which is, which is great. But again, uh, what was the number? So three in 10, or 30% said that it won't impact, oh yeah, 30% said that it will impact, but it needs additional, say, support or tools. And I'll talk a little bit, of more, a little bit more about this, but when we think about it, 5G is one part of the puzzle, but you also need, say, VR headsets, you also need great virtual experiences to really experience the metaverse. So uh, again, by a quick show of hands, how many of you have tried the Oculus Quest 2 or any VR headset? Wow, seriously? Okay, this, this is impressive, but okay. So, um, I don't know, I've tried it as well and I was really impressed. I know the resolution wasn't great. And this is a very good number of you that's, that's tried it. I was, I'm really impressed with that. So, so kudos to you all for being extremely tech savvy. Um, I was very impressed when I tried the Oculus Quest 2. I was really found that immersive. Dolly, I made you try that as well. And uh, you were a little disoriented at first, but you did, did like, like where it went. Um, so it's great, but it has to be accessible. You need great networks for it. You need virtual experiences. And that could potentially leapfrog advertising. We'll, we'll double click on this in a moment. When it comes to impact of advertising, what advertisers felt was it was actually split. So a large portion felt that it's going to revolutionize advertising. It's going to be a big jump. Another equally large segment said that it's not going to make too much of a difference. It's going to be big, but not that big. And about one fourth said that, you know, it's not gonna make a difference at all. So that's a very odd view, right? For, for a group that's fairly consistent um, in, in other surveys we've done to have very different perspectives. So we thought maybe it's a sector play. So when we, when we went a little deeper to see which sectors, sorry, I'm in the way, which sectors were really driving this, we found intuitively market, marketers and advertisers felt that mobile gaming, OTT, e-commerce. So these are gonna really benefit the most which makes sense, faster networks, better experiences, pages load faster, no friction for consumers. So from that perspective, I, I get that. Banking was interesting. Um, I, I don't know enough about how 5G will impact that, but the fact that marketers feel that is something definitely worth looking at. And ed tech, which makes sense again, because seamless content, and again, if you add VR to that, then it's a, a great experience. Now, what I took from that survey is actually some verbatims for, from marketers, and I've grouped them into three buckets. So the first, we have marketers talking about how ads will get more targeted, it'll be gamified ads, richer content, seamless advertising. So you know, that was interesting in its sense that, that five, they feel that 5G is gonna enable that. 
The second, and I like that particular comment, and again, it was anonymous, so I don't know who put that. Maybe one of you gave that survey, so if that's the case, thank you. But um, eSports. Now, eSports is really big internationally. In India, it's big in the sense that there's a lot of demand. If you look at the amount of content consumed, um, number of U Indian YouTubers on gaming and mobile gaming, it's massive. Uh, but again, most Indians don't have access to Wi-Fi, so they, they have to rely on 4G. So with 5G, competitive gaming could mean it could open the doors for more people. So I'm excited to see what eSports can do potentially for us in the future. And the last bit is this big chunk of, uh, of comments on Metaverse and VR. And there's so much, you know, so many different views all talking about Metaverse, augmented reality, virtual reality. Yes, that's definitely going to happen, and I'm, I'm very enthusiastic to see that so many people believe that. It's going to be a tough journey, though, because you need hardware to come together, you need software to come together, and you need the network. So it's not just 5G alone, but if you get those three, then that would be easily realized. So summing up, last three slides. Um, so summing up, what makes 5G exciting to me? So one is Internet of Things. And I know we've not spoken about that, and that didn't come from the surveys. It's just you know from what I read online. So Internet of Things enables multiple different devices beyond smartphones to connect, which is connected wearables, um, connected cars, connected uh, home automation. And why, this, why 5G is important is because it, as a carrier wave, it can have more simultaneous uh, signals versus a 4G network. So you'll have far less network congestion. So thereby enabling a really comprehensive internet of things. AR and VR we've spoken about, and obviously there's so much potential in gaming, in content, in entertainment, um, in education. So I'm keen to see where AR and VR goes. Fi uh, 5G Wi-Fi routers, and this is specifically for smaller towns and places, again, which are currently unconnected. Potentially, this could bring a lot more people on board and get them connected to a very high-speed internet. Next-gen mobile gaming I spoke of from the eSports side of it. So we see this internationally in India. I feel this will start picking up. So maybe some of the casual games might get replaced by some of the more active and more uh, entertaining games. And the last bit is network congestion, which again, as I spoke about 5G, because of a higher frequency, greater carrier wave, more signals can uh, go simultaneously. So that's all good. But there are a couple of watchouts that I feel I want to talk about. And I want to I'll just spend another minute. I just got about two, three minutes left. So when we went from 3G to 4G, right, there were genuine pain points on 3G. So videos would take a while to buffer. Web pages will take a while to load. So your overall internet experience on 3G was interesting at the time. It was novel, but it was nowhere where it was today. So 4G enabled a whole transformation of, of the web, right, from text to rich media. I'm not sure personally whether 4G to 5G will have such a large transformative effect for two counts. One is most games people play today are your very casual games which don't require high-speed internet. And um, even in terms of video content, videos still load fairly quickly today. Yes, with 5G, your resolution might get better, but would you really notice that on a small phone screen? I, I don't know, so I'm just putting that as a watch out. The other piece is price. So while consumers are aware that the price is going to go up, the degree of how it goes, or how far up it goes, will, will probably impact adoption. And speed. So here's the thing. As I said, uh, for, for certain content, even a 4G or 5G network, the video will take the same amount of time to load. Because largely, we don't download too much content, so we won't really notice the benefit of speed. And for games, if you're playing your very casual platform games that don't need a high-speed connection, you won't notice a 5G connection either. So maybe the speed might be an issue. And coverage. Initially, when launching any new network, it'll take time for coverage to build. I know the telecom operators are doing a fantastic job of rolling out the network really fast, but it will take time. So initially, network coverage might not be great. Having said that, I still want to end on a very optimistic note that we believe that with 5G, you will get more usage, more devices, newer experiences, and newer advertising. Yeah. With that, I'm, uh, I'm on time. Dolly, is there anything that you want to end with? I just wanted to uh, just add a point on Metaverse because, uh, you know, a couple of months back, I was asked to, you know, sort of opine on the fact that is Metaverse really going to be taking off and all of that in India, right? Uh, and, and my view on that was that it is purely a function of use case and brands will really have to ensure that 
is there a relevant use case that we are able to build for the consumers? It's as simple as that, right? Because technology is just a means to a particular objective that we want to achieve. So to that extent, of course, in terms of concept, very, very gung-ho about it. And I do think that with the advent of this technology now in India and the fast adoption that we are seeing, you know, some of those inhibitions which would have been in minds or, you know, some pockets where we would have faced impediments around metaverse, uh, you know, those uh, should be overcome. So net-net, we feel quite buoyed about this, right? Uh, though you've purely, you, you, you have uh, truly called out that, you know, just for content consumption, I don't necessarily need to have a 5G network. Or, or for some simple games, I don't need to have a 5G network. Uh, and it's also heartening to see that, you know, Airtel is also already talking about some 1 million uh, 5G users which they have on their network. Let's see how this adoption journey really goes. So let's see how things really evolve. Thank you so much for listening to us in a post-lunch session.